Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, the date is uh, July 16th, 2017. I've just started in the last three days here or so putting a putting a little information on about Mark Taylor, the firefighter self-professed uh, prophet to look at uh, look at all the details involved with him. Uh, this is the folder that I have and inside this folder I have these uh, four other folders. All of these uh, individual videos here are interviews with him or uh, videos that YouTube people have put together about his prophecies coming to pass and that sort of thing. Uh, this folder right here this is from uh, late last year, early this year when the prophecy came out and uh, with the election and that sort of thing. Yeah, I got my covered my back button up there. Okay, and this is this folder here contains all of his prophecies from his website right down through here I think there are, I believe there are 18 of them all together and we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 but these two last ones down here aren't actually uh, prophecies but he has a little army of God speech and then army of God declaration okay and then this folder contains information that I've collected all over everywhere that point out some of the discrepancies in his prophecies and his statements along the way it's just a little information that I've been digging up for a while uh, this folder here where you see my mouse it says other YouTube there's four or five videos in there of other YouTube channels that have pointed out some of the problems with him you know I did a little YouTube search and came up with four or five other other YouTubers okay this this is going to be several parts to this there's so much information here that I just I can't possibly put it all into one video I mean it would be 12 hours long probably but uh, I figure what I'll probably do is I'll just I'll start like I am right now and just keep following through until we kind of get all the information together in one place and get it all sorted out. I mean, this is a this is a very difficult expose here. I've read all of these prophecies and I found a lot of a lot of inaccuracies in them, a lot of just wrong information, a lot of well, I don't know any way else to say it lies. Okay? And I'm not exactly sure where I should start out because this really goes deep. I personally, uh, at this point, after doing this research, for I've been hard on it for three full days now. But I'd been looking into it off and on, little bits and pieces here and there, ever since Taylor's name first popped up. And I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not so much into these prophets and prophecies and that sort of thing anymore. I mean, years ago I was, oh yeah, but I don't know, I just I just got to where I just kind of ignore that kind of thing anymore. But here's where I want to start. I want to start with this Army of God declaration. So we're going to open that up.
Okay, Army of God Declaration of Unity. Okay. I, and then you're supposed to put your name in there. In the name of Jesus, decree and declare, according to Matthew 18, 19, that I will be in unity with my brothers and sisters in the army of God and all forces of heaven, that I will support and defend the word of God and his army with all of heaven against all enemies from the kingdom of darkness, even unto supreme sacrifice. So he's telling you to basically right there you're agreeing to go out there and fight these people to the death I will not fire upon those in the army of God but I will direct my fire upon the enemy and the enemy alone I will protect my brothers and sisters in God's army from any assault that the enemy may launch I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same on and off the battlefield again He's referring this to a battle. And he's not saying a spiritual battle. He's saying a battle. In other words, he's trying to get us to swear to going out and fighting in the physical realm, these people. Which, you know, in, if you're a Christian, born again, you know that we're not supposed to do that. We're not called to do that. We're called to spread the good news, and that's it. We're not, we're not called to, to get physical with anybody at any time okay I will obey the orders of the supreme commander of the army of God I take offense at anyone calling our Heavenly Father their supreme commander you know I've never heard him referred to that in the scriptures not one time and you can say that's semantics if you wish but I don't like it okay and the orders of the officers appointed over me. Uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. There are no officers appointed over me in this physical realm. According to Ephesians 4.11, the government of God and the uniform regulations founded on God's throne of righteousness and justice, I decree it and declare it on earth as it is in heaven so be it amen okay okay let's take that down okay and these are all the files we'll take that down for right now we don't need that in our way All right, here we are in Matthew 5, 33 through 37, oaths. Again, you have heard that it is said, has been said by them of old time, thou shalt, shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thy oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh evil. So here Mark Taylor is, trying to get you to sign a petition or an agreement in direct violation of Jesus' words right here. He told you not to do it. Now, is a prophet of God going to ask you to do something that Jesus specifically tells you not to do? Well, he has, okay? This is Matthew. Okay, let's go down to, let me see, James. Where you at, James? There you go. James 5. Uh, James 5, 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. James is warning you again. There's your second witness on that. 
don't do it, the scriptures tell you. But our illustrious prophet, Mark Taylor, he wants you to do it. Okay, that's strike one right there. I have a problem with that. Okay, right here now, I'm going to kind of stop and take another turn into this to get you some background so you know where I'm going with all this. This runs really deep. And I'm not uh, I'm not some kind of conspiracy nut, okay? I, I like to look at all the facts and dig up as much information as I can before I come to a conclusion, which is why you've seen all the information that I've put together so far, okay? Here we are back into his prophecies, okay? In this American Pharaoh article, we're going to take a look at that right here. I want to point something out. Hello, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I wanted to share something with you I believe will be an encouragement to the body of Christ, with the Lord, which the Lord led me to do back in 2011. I will keep this short. Prophet Paul Keith Davis always spoke of how the horse secretariat, secretariat, I guess the name is, represented the end time church. Well, while watching the movie Secretariat, I kept hearing, there's another one coming. There's another one coming. I then sat down to listen and to write the Lord saying, okay, this, this is when... Uh, Mark Taylor says he came up with his prophecy about Trump going to be the next president. Okay, and I'm going to pause that part of it for a minute. That's just to give you some background here of where I'm going with this. Okay, and we're going to go back over here in the concerns folder. Okay. I've, I've gone through and I've gotten a lot of information off the internet. Not, not on YouTube here, but away from YouTube. Uh, from several different sites here, okay? These are all HTML files where I've actually saved pages, okay? And I'm going to be showing all of this. I'm going to try to set it up in some kind of an order where where people can go through it these these all these uh website pages they're so long it's just no way that i'm going to be able to read all of that information into this video so i'm going to leave links to all of this to let you go and research this for yourself okay now the reason that i brought up that uh, one about secretariat or however, the Paul Keith Davis thing. Okay, well, Paul Keith Davis, who Mark Taylor just uh, called a prophet and basically uh, recommended to you, is him, himself is a, is a false prophet, okay? And he's tied into with all these other false prophets. Okay, from this one website here, let's talk more about Mark Taylor, okay? This, more or less, this is a blog. But this guy, <coughs> excuse me, trades, uh, traces back some of the people that Mark Taylor is associated with. Now, I've already pointed out the one. Okay, but we're going to scroll down here. I guess uh, Thompson... Thompson, the guy named this guy named Thompson runs a ministry that's also tied into all this. <coughs> I got to Anyway, I wanted to show you specifically here. Without getting into all the hoopla, I want to just let you know who these people are. They're they're all involved in the charismatic movement. Okay, here we go. We're getting there. Uh, during this time, okay, you had Jim, Jim and Tammy Baker, Richard Roberts, Roberts, Demos Shakarian, I've never heard of him, Pat Roberts, James Robinson, Kenneth Copeland, 
and he says too many others to list. This is this is the same people too that are they're involved like uh, Bob Jones and some of those characters. Okay, the charismatic movement, the latter rain, all that. Okay, well this is where Mark Taylor comes from. These people are in his background. And after all the research I've done, not only this page but these others, I've kind of come to the conclusion that maybe they've kind of groomed Mark Taylor and shoved him out there to actually get the Christians behind Trump. Okay? And if you notice, you didn't really hear too much about Mark Taylor until Trump. Trump decided he was going to run for president, and all of a sudden this Mark Taylor pops up, you know. And then if you do a little research on who Mark Taylor is and who his past associates were, which they're trying desperately to hide from you, then you see it's just all this latter rain movement and all these charismatics and all these people. So you got to be very careful here. And this ties also into this little thing I pointed out already about the, the fighting for the battle of God. Now, you know, if you sign that and pledge an oath in that manner, that's pretty much telling Donald Trump, go ahead and take us to war, bud. You know, he's trying to get the Christians to back Trump in that sort of thing. At no time in the Bible, understand this, I understand prophecy quite well. I studied it for years. And at no time does God tell us to go out and try to destroy these people. Okay, and what and then Mark Taylor, he's bringing you along saying, oh, you know, every America's going to be restored seven times. The wealth is coming back. That's all nonsense. I know it's a good message and it's a message that we'd all like to hear and believe, but it's just not true. It's unscriptural. The scriptures tell us what's going to happen. Jesus told us it's going to continue to wax worse and worse and worse until he returns. And it's going to be wars and famines and earthquakes. <clears throat> and Mark Taylor's trying to, you know, bring everybody up with this good message of how good things are going to be for America again. And that's totally contradictory to what the scriptures teach us. And you have to be very careful. And then you look at Mark Taylor and you find out who he's, who's behind him. All these people. Okay. And like I said, I can't read all this over over this, or it's going to be a 12-hour video. What people need to do is they're going to have to really reach research this for themselves. And I'm I'm going to you know I'm doing the groundwork. I'm getting the information all gathered up, and I'm going to put it in the description box where you can go and search this out. And I'm going to try to give you an idea of what's going on here. But that's really all I can do. I mean, I'm just, I just, I can't go through uh, making 12-hour videos, reading all this stuff. I just, it's just, just not in me to do that sort of thing anymore. I once did it, but that's that's been some years ago. I'm a little long in the tooth to be trying to do this again nowadays. But as far as research, I'll get in there and do it, you know. But anyway, I just wanted to give give you an idea. This is going to be the first video in this. And there's going to be a lot more information to follow. But I wanted to give you an idea of what I'm seeing here. The red flags that it's brought up. And what I'm trying to convey to you. The information is there. You know, and I just... I, I didn't think this was all that serious a thing. You know, this guy, maybe he was getting talked to about, maybe not... No, I think there's a conspiracy behind this. I think they, they actually have chosen Mark Taylor and pushed him up front, and he's getting guidance from powers that be. And uh, he, might, he might honestly believe that he's doing the Lord's will, as a lot of prophets do. I mean, or false prophets. They think God is speaking to them, but personally, I think it's familiar spirits. Because that's exactly where false prophets come from. It's not God talking to them. It's familiar spirits. And angel, uh, angel of light, Satan, comes to them. And you know, that's the same thing that happened with Muhammad, too. He thought an angel came and talked to him. And it wasn't an angel. It, it was the angel of light. 
And then he took it to his wife. He was scared to death. And she was a Catholic, and she convinced him that it was either, what, Gabe, Michael or Gabriel, one or the other, that came to him. So, so this is the same sort of thing here going on that was going on back there with Muhammad when he took over and created Islam in, what, 625, something like that. You have to be very, very careful with this, or you're going to get taken down a road, a path, that you want no part of. Because this is this is the delusion. This is where they get the Christians to follow the Antichrist straight into hell. Okay? You gotta think long and hard about this. Because he's got a message there that Christians want to hear. You know, even though it's it's looking to me like there's not one word of truth in it. But it's a good sounding message. And it has a lot of people working behind it behind the scenes to present it to you in such a way. Okay, I had one other thing I wanted to, to point out to you before I close this first video out. Okay, all through Mark Taylor's prophecies and his other statements that he's made, he keeps pushing unity, 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 but he's very, very careful about how he does that. And in that first, uh, that first declaration, the oath part that I showed you, it's in there too, okay? And he picked out a couple certain scriptures there that you have to be aware of. See, he's, he's, he's writing it down and he's calling it in such a way that he can fall back and say, well, this is what I meant, but he's not, he's not putting it forth to the people in that manner. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It's a deceptive way of doing things to where he can cover himself if he needs to, but if nobody questions him, then they'll be led into a direction different from what they should be, okay? We have to be very careful about this whole unity thing. The only, the only people that a Christian is called to unify with are other born-again Christians, okay? That's, that's, that's something you need to, to very carefully understand. You're not to unify with these false prophets or with these false religions or any of this. You're supposed to be in unity with nobody else but true born-again believers. Now, I don't remember if I actually mentioned it or not, but of all those prophecies of his, all these prophecies, all these PDFs, there's only one of those where he, he tells people to repent. Okay? All those others, there's no mention of repentance. All through, all through the scriptures, what do they always tell you? The, the true prophets, what do they always tell you? The first thing they tell you, repent. God says repent or he's going to bring the world down around your knees. Okay? Well, Mark's not calling on that. He's calling on us to all unify and go out there and, and fight the battle against the evil one. Okay? Of all these, of all these down through here, Jesus is not mentioned one time in all of those. And I'm going to show you that. We're going to go through and look at each individual prophecy before I'm all finished in this little series. And I'm going to prove to you Jesus is not mentioned. Okay, now in this Declaration of Unity, we'll look at that again. See if that was okay. Okay. Jesus was mentioned one time, okay? And there, okay, here it is, right here. In the name of Jesus. That's the only time out of all 18 of those files that the word Jesus is mentioned. That should send up a red flag right there. You have, you have to look at these things. And like I said, there's only one of those that mention repentance.
and that was uh, spiritual treason, okay? Okay, this is the one where he's talking about repentance. And basically what he's doing is he's getting on Christians for attacking one another, okay? Well, um, let me in, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The Christians that are attacking one another, they're, if they're doing it over things like a rapture uh, date or whether it's a pre-trib or, or a post-trib, if they're doing it over insignificant doctrinal issues, that's one thing. But mostly what you see is Christians pointing out other Christians' false doctrines. Okay? Now, when you have another Christian out there setting false prophecies, false rapture dates, twisting scripture to their liking, that is not a brother in Christ, okay? And what you see a true Christian doing is warning them, look, you're on the wrong path, you need to straighten up, you need to repent, you need to turn around, okay? That's, that's Mark Taylor's idea of Christians, Christians attacking other Christians. That's not the truth. Those Christians are attacking fake Christians, pointing out their error, okay? which they are called to do in the scriptures. But at no time is a Christian called to unify with a non-Christian. And that's very serious business there. And you have to understand that. The majority of the Christians that you're seeing out there in this whole Mark Taylor arena are not true Christians. You know, he's buddying up with, look, look at the, uh, the Christians that are surrounding Trump, okay? They're all those charismatic leaders and such, too. They're not true born-again Christians. No, they're all these TV evangelists and those sorts. These people are not true Christians. But yet Mark Taylor is actually trying to get you to follow those fake Christians, which are going to lead you into the one world religion. They're new world order tools. That's all they are. And you have to be very careful about that. And right here, this is Mark Taylor's little speech to get you to be feel guilty about that, not wanting to follow those false Christians. And that's, you have to look at it that way in order to understand it. Uh, Mark Taylor, he, I don't know how smart he personally is, but he has somebody behind him pushing him. I'll tell you that. These prophecies, they're not all coming from him. And you can start clearly seeing that by what is said. You have to really, really investigate what he's actually saying and what direction he's trying to lead you into. I have, you know, I, I've, I've watched all his interviews and all that, and yeah, he's, he's an enjoyable guy to watch. Oh, he's friendly and he's charismatic, you know. And you want to follow him. He gets you feeling good. But that's the exact kind of person, to be honest with you, you have to be careful of because he's leading you down a path you don't want to go down. The whole proof is in the pudding. Like I said, of all 18 of those pages, only one calls on people to repent. And he doesn't make it clear exactly who he's talking about there but what it looks like to me is he's telling true born again Christians to repent for striking out against false Christians now think about that that's very very serious he's trying to get you to unify with them okay back into this folder here that I have information on Mark Taylor all of these uh, all these are articles that are pointing that sort of thing out. I want to see if I can get this one to open up and what happens. Uh, wait a minute. That's okay. This is this is a, another one that I put together here. One World Religion. Okay. Look at the headlines of these articles, and you can go to this this page yourself and you can click on any of those links you like all about Pope Francis unity uh, the other churches going together who in the Protestant movement 
has bowed down to the Pope, uh, that sort of thing. Okay. So that that will do, Rick Warren, all those kind of people, charismatic movement. Taylor, Mark Taylor is a part of all this. And if you do the research on him, you can trace him back. That's very troubling. But I'm going to leave a link to this as well, to where you can research this. This WW, WCC here, uh, that's the World Council of Churches, I believe is, is what it's called. I have in, in that information who they are and what they're all about. And they're about unity at, at all costs. Everybody. One world religion. And that's where Mark Taylor's pushing people. This is very dangerous. This is very, very dangerous. People need to wake up to this. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want you to take my opinion for it. I don't want you taking my opinion about anything. That's why I'm trying to put this together and lay it out in the fashion that I am to where I'm going to give you all the information. And it's going to require you to actually go and spend some time. Like I said, I've been the last three days doing nothing but reading article after article after article, you know. My eyeballs are bleeding from this. And everything I read, is it's pointing in that direction. This is great deception. I think Mark Taylor is a very, very dangerous individual. But I don't want you taking my word for it. I want you to do the research and determine that. But I'll provide you here with the information to go look, to get you started. I don't, you know, after what I've seen in the last three days... I don't know how anybody can deny it. But if you do, you can always dig up more information. There's nothing stopping you. I believe all this information to be just honest, forthright information. You know, I don't think anybody's trying to attack him or go against him. No, they're just laying out the truth as they find it and they do their research, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I've researched it, and I'm laying out the results of my research. Now, yes, I am sharing my opinion, what it's led me to believe. But I'd rather you look at the information, and I'd like to know where it leads you to believe. And these articles are going all the way back. I mean, these, these go back for years and you can see the game that they've been playing all along. Well, that gives you an idea of, of where I am, what I think, and where I'm going with this. So I'm going to end this first video here. And then as the next videos come up, they're going to be focused more or less on all this information that I've collected up. And it's also going to be focused on his actual prophecies. I'd like to sit down and, and for the most part, read through all these prophecies and then point out problems that I see with them, each one going down. But that'll come at a later video. So I'm going to close this video out here. Thanks for listening. And if you have any more information on this, or you'd like me to look at certain things, then post it in the comment section, and I'll see what, what we can do there. Okay, thanks for watching.